Hello and welcome to the Aero-V engine assembly video series. I'm Joe Norris at Sonics Aircraft LLC. In this series of video segments, we are going to walk through the assembly of an Aero-V engine. We will be following the sequence called out in the Aero-V assembly manual. The manuals get updated much more often than the video series. So if there is a case where the manual and the video series disagree, your manual that came with your engine is the guide for you to follow. But in general, all of the steps that we have in the manual will be shown in the video series. We hope you enjoy the video series. We hope you enjoy putting together your Aero-V engine. And we look forward to seeing your airplane flying. The next step is to measure our crankshaft end play. In order to do that, we'll have to temporarily install our flywheel onto our crankshaft. The crankshaft on the flywheel end has dowel pins that will align with holes in the flywheel hub. Now those dowel pins are set so that there's only one orientation where the flywheel will fit. There's two pins that are closer together than the rest of the pins in the crankshaft. Now I've marked those two pins with black uh, marker here so that I can pick them up. You can't see that on camera, but I've got the two closer pins marked. And in our flywheel, you'll see that I've also marked the two closer holes with a black mark so that I can visually pick that up when I align my flywheel. It makes it real easy to put that on the, the crankshaft. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide that on there. I just sight right down through the, the dowel pin holes. Slides right on. Now this is the flywheel gland nut. It has a wavy washer on it there. This is the nut where you have to use the 36 millimeter socket that I talked about in the tools segment. That'll just thread in there. We'll thread it in by hand as far as we can. Now we're going to use an impact wrench to install it. Uh, we're not going to measure the torque this time because this is just a temporary installation. All we want to do is make sure that the crankshaft and the flywheel are, are together tightly and properly aligned so that we can measure our end place. So I'm just going to put our socket on there. Hammer it together, bring that out. That's all set. Now we know that our flywheel is properly mounted. Now, if you look down in this area here, you'll see that this is our thrust bearing in our, on our crankshaft. It has a flange on each side. And what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna move the flywheel back and forth to show you what the end play is without any shimming. You can just see that, that flywheel move back and forth that little bit there. Uh, that is what we call our crankshaft end play. Now we want that end play in our finished engine to be somewhere between three and six thousandths of an inch. We've got quite a bit more than, than that here, so what we end up doing is we'll end up shimming this when we do the final assembly. So we need to measure this gap. Now what I've done is I've moved the flywheel as far away from the engine as I can so that the inner thrust bearing uh, race is against the crankshaft gives us our maximum end play that we can have measured here. And I'm just gonna use a standard uh, automotive style feeler gauge set here to measure that uh, end play uh, between the bearing and the flywheel. And I've just randomly selected a few uh, numbers here that look like they might be close. I have a, a 18, a 17, and a 16 thousandths feeler gauge. Just, you see that that's pretty loose in there. I can still wiggle it around a little bit, so we need a little bit more. So I'm gonna take a 10 thousandths and add it to that. And you can see that I can get that in there, but it's pretty snug and that's exactly what we want. So now we know exactly what that gap is. That gap is the, the sum of 16, 17, 18, and 10 thousandths. And that adds up in my mind to 61 thousandths. So we have 61 thousandths of end play here right now. What we want to end up with is three to six thousandths of end play. We'll need to shim this when we assemble our engine to make sure that uh, we get that uh, three to six thousandths of actual end play. In order to do that, we use uh, these shims that are provided for that uh, reason. And I have three different thicknesses here. I have a 15 thousandths shims, I have 13 thousandths shims, and I have 10 thousandths shims. So we're looking at uh, 61 thousandths minus six puts us down to 55 thousandths is, is uh, the maximum that we can uh, use up, or the, the six thousandths is the maximum we can have. So I've got a couple of 15 thousandths here, so that's 30 thousandths total, plus a 13 is 43, plus another 13 
is 56 and that puts us within our range and we can come back over here and we can just slide those in there and make sure that that makes some sense. Looks like those three fit and those three along with a, about a 5 thousandths feeler gauge should put us right where we want to be. And I'm going to take a 5 thousandths feeler gauge here and put that in alongside that and it should be nice and snug and it is. It will go in but it's snug. That's exactly what we want. So we've got our, our three shims in there, or four shims actually, and our 5 thousandths feeler gauge and that gives us 5 thousandths of end play, which is within the 3 to 6 thousandths uh, tolerance that we have for end play. So now we know that when we reassemble our flywheel onto our crankshaft, when we're doing our final assembly of our engine, we'll put this stack of shims in there and that'll set our end play for us.